steps as we visit one of the Netherlands' most spectacular springtime gardens. Discover the secret floral treasures of an historic garden in Puerto Rico. And explore a wondrous landscape in Japan where rolling hills and sparkling ponds reflect an ancient tradition. Join us for a spectacular world garden tour. For many, there's no season more beautiful than spring. Early spring bulbs, crocus, narcissus, and hyacinths are the first to bloom. But the tulip reigns queen of the springtime garden, and nowhere in the world is the tulip given a more regal status than in the Netherlands. Just 40 miles southwest of Amsterdam, near the small town of Lees, lies an area that was once woodland and virgin dunes. From the years 1401 to 1436, this land was a hunting ground for the Countess Jacqueline of Bavaria. Today, these fields are bursting with colorful tulips. The Countess also used the area for growing vegetables and herbs for her kitchen. That's how this now world-famous garden received its name, the Kuchenhof, which in Dutch literally means kitchen garden. By the mid-1800s, the Kuchenhof was converted into a magnificently landscaped park in the style of an English country garden. The sparkling ponds and majestic trees still flourish within these glorious gardens. Every spring, tulips bloom in an explosion of color. At the Kuchenhof, visitors can find every color of tulip imaginable. Some dazzling varieties even have splashes of a second color. A benign virus transmitted by aphids causes this curious feature. It's easy to see why at one time, the many striking varieties of tulips was cause for a craze called tulip mania. In the early 17th century, an insatiable desire for tulip bulbs spread throughout Europe. Bulbs were traded like modern day stocks and their value soared beyond reason. In fact, the price of a single bulb was enough to buy a house. The craze reached its peak in 1634. Then the market collapsed and plunged both investors and merchants into debt. However, growers continued to hybridize and produce tulips. Then in 1947, a consortium of 40 prominent bulb growers selected the Kukanoff as the perfect exhibition garden. Here, visitors could enjoy the splendor and variety of the springtime flowers. They were thinking, you see those beautiful bulb fields, but the problem of the bulb fields is that they chop off the heads of the flowers so quickly because the energy has to go into the bulb instead of in the flower. And that's why they were thinking there should be a permanent exhibition of flowers where they can show them during their complete flowering time. Tulips, narcissus, hyacinths, daffodils, everything in this beautiful landscape. To this day, more than 90 Dutch bulb firms showcase their incredible displays at the Kukenhof's permanent exhibition. The relationship between the Kukenhof and the growers is very important. For them it's important because here they have a beautiful old landscape where they can showcase their bulb flowers. And for us it's very important because they provide us with six million flower bulbs and it's a very good relationship. It's going both ways. 35 gardeners plant and care for six million bulbs year-round. And the Kukenhof is delighted to share the wealth each spring as thousands of visitors flock to the garden shops where they can order any of the beautiful varieties they've seen. If you are here on Kukenhof, you always will have the best bulbs because you get them directly from the nursery. Always the first fresh, big, fat bulb directly from the nursery. You can't start better and uh, we sent the bulbs in autumn in the time of planting. I'm going to do my entire backyard and I have a half an acre to, to landscape, so I'm, I've got all kinds of ideas. Now, I, now I've decided that my own home gardens are just not gonna do it. <laughs> we're gonna, I'm gonna have to sit down with the boys and we're gonna have to design something that's a lot better. <laughs> 
While millions of bulbs from the Kukanov have been transplanted into gardens around the world, it still remains the mecca of flowering bulbs. End of March till the end of May, uh, we have flowering time. The crocus, after that, the early flowering tulips, and after that, the late flowering tulips. While tulips reign supreme at the Kukanov, many other bulbs are featured. There are combinations of narcissus, daffodils, and hyacinths, including the fragrant Dutch hyacinth, and the grape hyacinth, or muscadine. We always make a combination planting with the blue, the muscari, in combination with double flowering tulips. Other exciting accents are created with fritillaria, or crown imperial, snowflake, and a host of flowering perennials, shrubs, and trees. For a few short months each spring, this former medieval hunting ground is transformed into a kaleidoscope of color, the Kukanoff. One of the world's largest springtime gardens is also one of the most spectacular to behold. When we come back, we'll visit a lush tropical garden, rich in history and impressive plantings. We're off to Puerto Rico when World Garden Tour returns. As World Garden Tour continues, our next stop is Puerto Rico an island filled with exotic flowers, palm trees, and breathtaking natural wonders. Puerto Rico is also a country rich in history, with historic buildings and lovely gardens like those at Casablanca. Located in old San Juan, Casablanca was once the home of Juan de Ponce de Leon, the city's first governor. The gardens of Casablanca have that romantic and legendary style. Most of the people believe that they date from uh, the time Juan Ponce de Leon's descendants used to live here, but it's not true. They date from 1930. The Spanish colonial style residence was occupied by the de Leon family for 250 years. This magnificent Mediterranean styled home has wide walkways and brilliant white stucco walls. They form the perfect backdrop for the lush green gardens. After the descendants of Juan Ponce de Leon, the next people to come into Casablanca were the military governors of the island and the military commanders, actually. So uh, for a while, it was only a military headquarter. By the time the US government came into the island, they developed the gardens because they wanted to revive all the Spanish heritage. And uh, that's how the gardens have become a part of the people's uh, legacy. After 50 years of existence, any piece of garden or building here in Puerto Rico becomes a monument or a historical site and uh, the government has developed the areas so that they remain in the same style and that people can enjoy them. Today, one of the most delightful features in Casablanca is the fountains and pools. This peaceful park-like setting where visitors can enjoy these cool reflecting pools has a history of its own. Before the spouting fountains and stone walls were constructed, this garden served as a quarry for the construction of a municipal hospital. There's an alley that goes right behind the fountains, a little street that it's called the Alley of the Hospital, in commemoration of the construction of the municipal hospital. On top of it, there are the secret gardens, and the secret gardens have been developed since 1992. And they're way behind all the buildings. They're almost a maze. They're beautiful. As visitors wind their way through the lush foliage of the secret gardens, a breathtaking discovery awaits them. Just beyond the terrace is a magnificent view of San Juan Bay, framed by native palms and exotic tropicals. To point out some of the natives, we have the royal palm. And it's called the royal palm tree because it's so tall. It has such a royal look to it that it's one of the most, it's considered one of the most beautiful palm trees in the world. 
Then we have the traveler's palm tree, which is uh, very interesting. It's not a native plant, but it's called the traveler's uh, palm tree because when people were traveling in Mad Madagascar, where it's originally from that tree, uh, they would cut off a stem and all the water that it accumulates, they could drink off. So that's the reason why it's called the traveler's palm tree. An unforgettable array of Eliconia, also called lobster tail, add their brilliance to the secret gardens. And an exotic Christmas tree palm shows off its vibrant red seeds. In the secret gardens, we can find the white birds of paradise. They look a lot alike the traveler's palm tree, much smaller. And the particularity of the white birds of paradise is that instead of blossoming orange, as we're used to, they're white. They're gorgeous. Native hibiscus thrive in harmony within Casablanca's landscape, while another native to Puerto Rico, the alamander, shows off its great yellow blooms. In another part of the garden, visitors can discover exotic bottle brush plants, gingers, and a rare beauty called Elan Elan. It comes from Indonesia, and uh, it's one of the most expensive ingredients of perfume. It's always in the most expensive and exclusive perfumes around the world, and it grows here in Puerto Rico. More familiar vegetation rises high above Casablanca's gardens as wonderful grapefruit trees reveal their luscious bounty. We also have El Vomitel Colorado, the Geiger tree, which is spectacular because it's a small tree that maintains throughout the whole year a very intense green that contrasts with the red or very intensive orange color of the flowers. It's beautiful. In addition to the royal and traveler's palms we saw earlier, coconut palms sway against the blue San Juan sky. It's very typical of all the landscaping around our beaches. It's very tropical and distinctive of Puerto Rico. The historic fountains of Casablanca are a reminder of Ponce de Leon's quest to discover the fountain of youth. And today, the gardens radiate their own bit of magic, inspiring visitors to explore, relax, and renew their spirits. When we return, we'll visit a sacred garden in Japan, built 400 years ago to honor a shogun warrior. Our world garden tour now takes us to the fertile mountain region of Japan. Just east of Kyoto, there's a garden of rare beauty. It's a serene and sacred place that whispers of ancient Japanese traditions. The tranquil gardens of the Kodaiji Temple were designed in 1601 by the wife of a shogun warrior to honor his memory. The gardens display two main disciplines of Japanese design, the hill pond style called Tsukiyama, and the dry garden style called Karasan Sui. The dry garden is to the north of the Kodaji Temple and contains only rock and greenery. This garden was built 400 years ago, and the stones were brought here from Shogun Hideyoshi's castle. There's no water in the garden, but it's made as if there is water. Visitors to this striking dry garden can enjoy its intriguing rock formations. Some of the century-old stones have been strategically placed to look like a rushing waterfall. And moss, portraying water, flows along the dry stream and under several stone bridges. There are three stones. The center stone is always standing. So you have this stone is the first stone, two, three stones, and the second stone is always closely tied to the first stone. This grouping is the same, one, two, three. It's the same pattern in all of these stone groupings. So if you go here, once again, you have the same type of an arrangement. You have a standing stone with a second stone close to it and a third stone. The triangular stone formations represent mountains and foothills. And according to Japanese tradition, the triangle also represents power and strength. As visitors make their way to the South Gardens, past the entrance to the temple, the view softens, as does the energy. 
As far as flowers are concerned, typical Zen gardens do not use flowers. But this garden was built for a woman, the shogun's wife, and for pleasing the feminine taste, to bring that sense of beauty into the garden. Centuries ago, the shogun's wife would walk these stone paths of the temple to admire the delicate azaleas. Today, their graceful pink and white blooms still offer visitors a spectacular springtime show. Kodaiji is important for several reasons. One of those reasons is that this is the largest temple built by a woman, and overall, it's more feminine. There are flowers for every season, and there are wonderful maple trees that have excellent fall color. On the other side of the temple, the gentle green slopes and sparkling pools of the hill pond gardens come into view. This style of garden is known as Tsukiyama. One of the hill pond gardens has two islands. One is called the Turtle Island and the other the Crane Island. They say these hill pond gardens have a spiritual quality with roots in Chinese mythology. The crane brings 1,000 years of life and happiness, and the turtle brings 10,000 years of happiness and good life. One of the delights of this garden is being able to discover the turtle and the crane on each of the islands. On the turtle island, there is a head, feet, and a tail, and there's a shell. Turtle islands are very literal and simple to understand. Also, there's always one pine tree planted on the back of the turtle. This crane is a very abstract interpretation. One stone expresses the essence of the crane, yet it may take different forms. A crane may be sleeping, drinking water, or flying. Beyond the crane and turtle hill pond gardens, Japanese tea houses grace the rolling landscape. Their moss-lined paths and stone garden features are reminiscent of ancient customs. The stepping stones, the reason that stepping stones were used rather than gravel paths is to keep the people off the ground. Um, the name Roji, which is also used for tea gardens, means dewy ground, which is this aesthetic appreciation of the moist, the, the kind of a damp, enclosed feeling that was driven for in tea gardens. A stone water basin serves as a place for purification before the tea ceremony. While stone lanterns light the garden passages all the way to the moon viewing pavilion. There is a long history of literature about viewing the moon and poetry about viewing the moon. And so building something like a moon viewing pavilion over the pond in your garden is something that would be considered normal, almost like putting a barbecue in your backyard in America. The appreciation of nature's simple wonders, like the reflection of the moon or the power of a stone, is highly regarded here in the gardens of the Kodaiji Temple. When we return, we'll visit the Kodaiji Temple's enlightening Zen gardens, and we'll give you some ideas on creating a Zen garden of your own. As we continue our world garden tour in the gardens of Kodaiji in Kyoto, Japan, we take a look at two traditional Buddhist gardens. These are the Zen gardens, and they're perhaps the most familiar of all Japanese gardens. As visitors pass through the great gates of the Kodaiji temple, the smooth white sand of the South Zen garden comes into view. The use of white sand has one functional purpose and one decorative purpose. The functional purpose is to get light into the garden, and the decorative purpose is that it symbolically represents water. You get the feeling that the shores and hills surrounding this body of white sand are being washed by the water. The Zen Buddhist school of thought is based on the belief that minimalism is a way to enlightenment. In order to experience true minimalism, the mind must be devoid of any sensory input, and Zen gardens provide an ideal setting. This garden, which was built about 40 years ago, contains one large stone weighing approximately 40 tons, and smaller stones, which represent islands. These are mythical islands, islands where the gods dwell, so there's a spiritual quality to it. 
the rules of minimalism were modified in the design of the Kodaiji Temple Gardens to permit flowers. We see this in another elegant Zen garden at Kodaiji, on the shoreline of a tranquil sea of gravel. There's an azalea bush on which to meditate. Visitors to the Zen garden can experience its calming effects from the deck of the temple. From these gardens, you can appreciate a sense of simplicity and an understanding of how to create a Zen garden in your own backyard. First, create an area that is contained by a border of stones, wood, or plantings. Then fill the area with gravel, small stones, or sand. A rake is often used to create ripples in the stone, but you can create any pleasing design. As the rocks bordering the Zen garden at Kodaiji have symbolic meaning, you too can utilize favorite rocks and stones that hold a memory or have a special meaning to you. According to Eastern tradition, they will add positive energy to your garden. From the mystical gardens of Kyoto's Kodaiji Temple to a tropical garden paradise in Puerto Rico to a world-famous tulip garden in the Netherlands, we thank you for traveling with us, and we hope you'll join us again.